hello guys welcome to my first tutorial session in this video i'm going to show how to spawn objects later we can incorporate this into an inventory system i just loaded up my unity here and uh, i have created some folders i created a material folder and uh, added some material uh, if you don't know how to create a material all you have to do is uh, right click create material and uh, you can name it whatever you want and uh, give it some color second i have created a resources folder and an items folder inside it and i have created a scripts folder and created two empty scripts call them destroyer and object spawner so the first thing we need to do is uh, to create a reference in an actual game this uh, will be a player or a empty object now this is a point from where the, uh, the objects get spawned so for the sake of clarity let's uh, use a capsule here i'll give it a red color by dragging the material onto the object now i'll call it object spawner and attach the script to it next uh, i'll create some objects that can be spawned later let's call this uh, blue and give it a blue color let's create a sphere and give it some green color Let's just duplicate this some more times and give it different colors. Let's just move these items into our items folder and create prefabs of them. Now we can delete these objects from the scene and try to spawn them. Yeah, uh, when you're spawning an object, we need to destroy them after some time. We can use a destroy script for that. So I'll attach a destroy script onto all these objects. And uh, inside the destroy script, all we need to do is. Uh, destroy game object after some time say 5f get this for float so that's it for destroyer now for the object spawner uh, we would need a object array let's call it items uh, let's clear everything in this array at the start of the scene and uh, load everything in the items folder inside resources to this items array object. For this we use uh, resources.load uh, all and uh, the folder name in double quotes. Uh, now we need a list of game objects. Call it list. And uh, we'll use a for each loop to add every item in the object array into the list and convert them into game objects. Now let's just check if everything is loaded up. So when we hit play, we have everything here in the items and the list. When we are not playing, the size goes back to zero. Now we can uh, do random spawning, uh, like. Uh, here in the items folder, we can uh, spawn objects in the alphabetical order that it is in the folder, or we can do a random spawning. For this, I'm using a 
Bo Boolean variable. It's called a random spawn. And set it to false. And if you press R, the random spawn variable is toggled. So uh, we can spawn objects uh, automatically after a fixed time, or we can spawn them on button press. Uh, let's first do button press. Let's input dot get key down equal to S S for spawn. Uh, we'll use a method to check if it is random spawning or not. And we'll call it check random spawn. Or I'll, I think uh, we'll just call it get item and uh, set the item in this method. Item to be spawned in this method. So the function is created. So we need a item variable. We also need some float variables. This is a minimum and maximum offset from the reference point where the object is going to be spawned. So if random spawners check, we do random spawning. So item equal to uh, let's initialize this item into equal to null. And then uh, if random spawning item equal to list uh, random dot uh, range zero two. dot count or oh, else yeah, we need a variable here to track the position so serialize field in item count equal to zero so every time we check if the item count variable is less than list dot count minus one and uh, if it is so I mean uh, greater than greater than list dot count minus one and if it is so we change the item count to zero and then spawn the item at the position With an increment item count as well. You now we got item count, item. Now to spawn the object is actually quite easy. We just need to find the position. So the so for that we have uh, to use vector three spawn pause the variable uh, and the uh, spawn dot position plus new Vector three. We will use a random range here for all axes. It's just the same thing, so we'll copy paste this. Two more times, and uh, then we just have to instantiate the item at our spawn pause with the rotation of the item. Uh, with the rotation of a spawning object. That's it. So let's see if this works. So when we hit play, mm, 
our random spawn is unchecked so it should be spawning in the order it is in the items folder so when i hit s that spawn but yeah it's spawning and we can see that the objects are getting destroyed as well that's cool now if we press r we'll have a random spawning See, we are getting a random spawning. That's pretty cool. Now, to automate this process, like uh, to spawn objects after a fixed time, we need to create a other boolean variable. Uh, let's call it auto spawn. Set it to false. And uh, let's just copy this. Toggle. And if A is pressed, auto spawn is checked. So we are spawning on button press and then not auto spawn. We do this else if auto spawn. We just do the same thing here, but we'll just need to add another condition which I'll show you. Uh, we need to introduce two more float variables so like uh, let's spawn time equal to zero and uh, cooldown time let's say is uh, five seconds so if auto spawn is checked we just Check if uh, spawn time is less than uh, time dot time, and if it's, it is the case, we spawn the object. Else, we don't do anything. And uh, after every time the object is spawned, we just increment the next spawn time to be equal to time dot time plus cooldown time. So, in a, a game. If there is an attack and uh, after the attack there is some cooldown time, I think the same concept is applicable there as well. So let's just see if this works. So now when we hit play, we see that there are two toggles here, random spawn and auto spawn and both are unchecked. So now if we press S, we see that objects are spawning and uh, now we press A and leave it like that. We can see that objects are spawning on their own after some time. You can also do a random auto spawn together like this. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and good luck to you all. Peace.